His Excellency, the uh, Excellency uh, Minister in charge. The, the, uh, the General Director of uh, the National Service of Hydrology of Ghana, the Representative of the uh, Director of uh, General of uh, ACMAT, the Representative of uh, ECOWAS Commission, the Distinguished re Representative of Seals and ECOWAS Country, Distinguished Expert from Agreement and ACMAT, Distinguished Participant, Distinguished Guest, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, I would like, on behalf of the Secretary, Executive Secretary of Seals, and on my own behalf, to express my gratitude to the Minister of Communication for his commitment to share the ceremony on the presentation of the result of the workshop on the seasonal forecast for the country of Gulf of Guinea. The importance of the seasonal for forecast as a tool for decision support for the farmer is well established. Indeed, the results allow them identify strategic response, make their living condition more resilient to climate change effect. Therefore, agreement as a future regional climate center for the Sahel and West Africa give a particular importance to this activity in line with the adaptation strategy to climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not be too long, but just before I gave, I gave the floor to the, representation, to the presentation of the forecast result, I would like once again to thank the Ghanaian government, particularly the ministry who honored us in being here, here this morning. The Director General of the National Agency of Meteorology of Ghana and his team and the Director General of Hydrology of Ghana for the greatest welcome and the facility deployed for the success of this workshop. I also want to thank the expert of the, of the five countries of the Guinea Gulf for the work do, do, done during these ten days. Finally, my thanks goes to the technical and fi financial partner of SILS which provide the necessary financial support for this workshop. I would like to mention the African Bank Development Bank, the European Union, and the ACP Secretariat through the West Africa Sawidra and GFCS project. Thank you for your kind attention. A round of applause for DG. So before we go on, on the high table, we have DG Dr. Rodrigo from Agrimet. We have um, our Minister, Deputy Minister for Education, Mr. George Andam. We have our GMET Director General, Dr. Michael Tanu, and Mr. Godfrey um, representing ACMAD. A round of applause for them. So, we move to the presentation of results and recommendations by Dr. Say Dutrari. Thank you very much. So I'm going to present the result of the seasonal forecast workshop we held this week here in Accra. And uh, this is the outline of the presentation. First of all, we are, I'm going to present the results of the various uh, characteristics of the season, namely cumulative rainfall, onset date of the season, cessation date of the season, dry spell durations, and river discharge. And finally, I will present also some recommendations for user community. So uh, the forecast we did are about these five characteristics 
starting with uh, the cumulative rainfall. This occurs for two, two periods. The first period is from March, April to May, and the following three month period, April, May, June. So these are the forecasts we made right now, but later on we'll do updates each, each month for the next coming three months. So if you look at those maps, we see areas where expected rainfall should be average to above average. The green areas are above average, average areas, and the gray areas are where the average rainfall is expected. Regarding the onset date of the season, we have three, three parts here. In the western part, mostly uh, Cote d'Ivoire and uh, western Ghana, we have expect some late uh, onset date of the season. Uh, eastern Ghana and Togo and Benin and also western Nigeria, we expect early onset of the rainy season. And the over part of Nigeria would be average onset. Regarding the dry spell duration after the onset, because we have onsets, but for crop conditions, we, after the onset, there is likelihood also of having dry, long dry spells. So the probability of those dry spells uh, are uh, to be long, longer than average, are in the, this uh, uh, area of Cote d'Ivoire, southern Ghana, southern Togo, and southern Benin. That is they will be shorter than average in the green areas, which is Nigeria and Central Benin, Togo, and Ghana. As for the cessation dates, this is also very important for planning and culture. Uh, we have average cessation dates uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, and Benin, and late cessation dates in Nigeria, Western Nigeria. As for dry spells before the end of the season, which is also a critical uh, period for crop growth, we expect some longer dry spells throughout the region, the, the whole Gulf of Guinea region. We also did forecast of river flows in the major river basin, coastal river basin, and here we see in green we have areas where we expect uh, some average to above average river flows. In blue, it is above average river flow. In yellow, it is average to below average river flows, which are expected here. Those are the major river basins in the coastal areas. So now let's go for a recommendation. There is an over overall recommendation from uh, this workshop. As uh, we, go, we, we, we go from here to our attractive countries, there is a recommendation for, to make large communication of the result of this external forecast and uh, make our, our nest reeling activities among uh, vulnerable communities involving the various disaster risk reduction platform and uh, in the communication and crisis management. But we have also particular recommendation regarding some target uh, audience. But for example, with regard to risk, we have some uh, recommendation, for example, for farmers to diversify agricultural practices, uh, particularly through favoring drought tolerant crops, varieties, and species. And also, regarding water resource management, we encourage the enforcing the integrated water resource management uh, by taking into account the different uses. So regarding flood risk, uh, we recommend that uh, uh, authorities should take uh, 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 measures to prevent and control occupation of flood prone areas. And also ensure the availability of the uh, stock of medicines in the area where uh, uh, access would be difficult in the case of floods. And also to ensure the regular cleaning of drainage, uh, drainage channels, particularly in urban areas. Okay. There are also risks related to, to health. Uh, the recommendation to, our, to these uh, health uh, authorities is to 
to implement vaccination activities not only for humans but also for animals and encourage the use of mosquito nets to build up stocks for anti-malarial medicines and also uh, there should be some regular monitoring of water quality and build up stocks for water treatment products and lastly uh, there are just not risk because the season also can bring some opportunities so with regard to those opportunities uh, where above average uh, rainfall is expected or early onset of the season or above average river flows there are some opportunities to take namely to explore the possibility of extending food uh, of cropping practices and fish farming and also for farmers to increase fertilizer application and also uh, use of uh, high yielding crop varieties in order to boost agricultural production. So finally, we suggest that uh, since uh, uh, these forecasts are going to be updated, like I said earlier, every month, so we encourage all the stakeholders to closely monitor the update that would be given by the various center agreement ACMAD and the National Meteorological, and Meteorological Agency. We thank, we have to have, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Minister, I remember 2017, you chaired the West African Chad and Cameroon, comprising 19 countries for the Sahelian region. This one, 2020, is for the Gulf of Guinea Coast. So five countries, we have Togo, we have Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, Nigeria, and Ghana ourselves. Then for our um, partners that we expect to disseminate the information, we have MOFA Suite, MOFA, our extension officers, then two pharma groups. We have AMA here, we have um, CSIR, we have Water Research, um, Water Resources Commission, and um, is there anyone I've not mentioned? NADMO is here. So we expect that this will not be on our table, but it will be um, disseminated for us appropriately. So as they said, in conjunction with updates, um, GMET and updates, you disseminate our information for us. Thank you. Before the minister comes, we want um, our lady from Côte d'Ivoire to give the vote of thanks on behalf of the refs. She will be in French and our gentleman from Nigeria, um, Mr. Wolfred, to give us in English on behalf of the participants. Round of applause for Uh, dear participants, uh, honorable and uh, invited guests, uh, we greet you. We uh, pass meeting for the uh, for the Prisac provide pre twenty for the uh, countries of the Gulf of Guinea. That's called pre uh, 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 that's the twenty 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 edition held from the fifth to thirteenth March, twenty twenty in Accra in Ghana. We express our deep gratitude to, uh, and our big thanks to Ghana authorities uh, for the warm welcome and the hospitality and all the facilities that we made available to us and also what to help to contribute to the success of this meeting. We thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say uh, a very big thank you to the chair of this uh, ceremony, uh, the Deputy Minister of uh, Communication, and then uh, the Director General of uh, Ghana Met, DG Ahmad, and uh, DG Agrimet. Uh, it's been a honor and a very good privilege, a worthy experience for us since our arrival in Ghana. 
uh, the, the meals have been really good and the weather has uh, also been very highly friendly to us. Uh, we want to say a very big thank you for the organization. It's been perfect. And um, I, I would like to say that what we do uh, is a perishable product. And that is why this gathering is very essential, why we have the user community in attendance. Uh, because as we have produced it, they need to use it. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate your presence here, the user community. And we hope that uh, when you leave this place, you will make use of uh, uh, the result from this gathering. So once again, we want to say a very big thank you for everyone in attendance here. And uh, we hope uh, that uh, at the end of the season, when we look back at what we have done, we'll be able to commend ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause for them. Thank you so much. We will now listen to the minister's speech. We can do it better, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam MC, and good morning to all the participants. Um, Mr. Chairman, the Acting Director General of the Ghana Meteorological Services, uh, Magana Meteorological Agency, Directors, Management and Staff of GMET, Heads of Institutions, Friends from the Global Framework for Climate Services, Agreement Secretariat, representatives of national hydrological and meteorological institutions across our neighboring West African countries, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again. I, I'll start by one quick observation and an apology from the Honorable Minister. The observation that I made and I'll discussing with the Director General was that I see very few ladies in the front line of this workshop. Uh, the Minister of Communications is a lady and when we are having workshops like this and there's a clear gender imbalance, we are quite sensitive to those things. So I would like to appeal to the leadership from the various countries to make a conscious effort to try and get more women into the front line and then let there be a bit of a gender balance as far as workshops like this are concerned. The Honorable Minister would have loved to be here herself and um, unfortunately she has to attend to another equally important assignment and so she's asked me to come and represent here. So I'm grateful to the organizers Agrimat, GFCS, ACMAD, for the opportunity given to me to join you here today for the closing ceremony on the seasonal forecast and hydro and agro hydroclimate characteristics of the longest season for the Gulf of Guinea countries. I would like to suggest that the organizers, considering the, important, the importance of the output that is generated from this workshop, that you consider the timing for the workshop so that the information that is available is available before the rains actually start. Because if the rains start and you come and tell us that this is what is going to happen, then it's like, you are, you are a bit delayed and the quality of the information doesn't really help in the planning purpose. So while there's very good output that is coming out from here, 
I think that we should reconsider the timing that we can get this output available before the rains actually start. I am informed by the Acting Director General of the Ghana Meteorological Agency that the past five days of this workshop have been highly interactive, engaging, and deliberative. Because I've seen the output as was just presented before me, and I think that some solid work has gone through. I think you should put your hands together for yourselves. <laughs> On this note, I wish to commend all participants as well as the trainers of this workshop, especially those from our neighboring West African countries, for your contributions and output during the past five days. Intellectual exercises like this one that you have gone through have never been an easy task, especially in developing areas like seasonal forecast. And I say, Ayuko, congratulations, very well done. It is my understanding that participants have been trained on techniques to analyze and characterize the agro hydro -clim climatic risks related to the long rainy season in the Gulf of Guinea countries, develop a seasonal forecast of the agro-hydroclimatic characteristics and co-production of agro-hydroclimatic forecast for disaster risk reduction. I believe that these are relevant subject areas considering the increasing rate at which climate-related disasters are hitting countries, including Ghana. And the fact that the future projections for the sub-Saharan Africa has indicated a future increase in rainfall variability, a rise in temperature and sea levels, and an increase in extreme hydrometeorological phenomena such as droughts and floods. I'm excited to know that there's going to be a press release on the risk and specific actions to be taken in order to reduce risk and disasters in the Gulf of Guinea countries. And this will be issued and published at the end of the workshop. I'm also aware that this workshop is followed by a forum to dialogue with users and the structures in charge of risk reduction and disaster reduction in the countries concerned. Mr. Chairman, I therefore appeal to all our participants that as you return to your respective countries, let us continue deliberations with the relevant disaster and risk organizations to draw up workable, feasible plans and strategies to mitigate the challenges of consequences of these hydrometeorological phenomena. The continuous collaboration with relevant state institutions, I believe, is a step in the right direction. On our part, the government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Communications, we we'll continue to provide the necessary support to the Ghana Meteorological Agency to enable the agency to deliver on their mandate. The ministry is collaborating with the Ghana Meteorological Agency to develop the national framework for climate services in Ghana with support from the Global Framework for Climate Services, the Economic Commission for West African States, ECOWAS, and the Agricultural Development Bank, ADB. Steps have been taken by the government of Ghana to provide the Ghana Meteorological Agency with, I wouldn't say all, but with most of the necessary tools and equipment, such as automatic weather stations, calibration equipment, and message switching system, amongst others.
already. The Establishment Act of the Ghana Meteorological Agency has been amended to provide a more secure and sustainable source of funding for the activities of the agency. The President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Kufwadu, as co-chair of United Nations Secretary General's group of eminent advocates on the 2030 SDGs has reiterated his commitment to the fight against climate change. Mr. Chairman, the government of Ghana's flagship programs, such as the One Village, One Dam, One District, One Factory, and the planting of food and jobs program, which have so far seen major success, are all climate reliant. Therefore, to guarantee the continued success of these programs, there's a need for us to pay attention to climate conditions. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that your brief stay here with us uh, over the past five days, you certainly have experienced the well-acclaimed Ghanaian hospitality and that you've enjoyed your stay here. The doors of Ghana are always open to you. We look forward to hosting many more of such programs in the future. Mr. Chairman, on this note, it is my singular honor to declare the workshop on the seasonal forecast of agro-hydro climate characteristics of the longest season for the Gulf of Guinea countries formally closed. I wish you all safe flights and journeys back to your countries and we hope that we will be enjoying COVID-19 free returns when we go back. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for him. And a very big one.